Hey Brownie Bites, what's up? Today is our 10th wedding anniversary. Jesse and I have been together for 10 years and we're gonna talk about some tips that we would have for you if you've made it to 10 years. If you're over 10 years, you're gonna think we haven't done anything we're yet. This video isn't for you. We're just this is babies. This is for you guys who are pressing towards the big one zero. <laughs> we're also gonna share a little bit of our story and show you how we celebrate our 10 year anniversary. Let's do it. Man, it's windy today. He really didn't want to do his hair because it's so windy, but he's gonna thank me in 10 years when we look back at pictures. Me in 10 years, you had hair. It was amazing. Look how tall it is. <laughs> I need to cut it. A refresher for you, because you probably can't remember anything and you're probably having trouble hearing me right now. You had hair. Hey, this'll be our 20 year. Hey guys, 20 years down the road. 20. Hi, this is what we look like. Oh, I gosh. wonder if, I wonder if we look the same. We still got it. I'll Jared, maybe hey. have two gray hair. Babe. I got nothing. I can guarantee you, you're still well, as beautiful as the day actually, I met you. Jesse and I are in the beautiful city of Fort Worth. Well, we made it. In the parking garage. Here to go to one of our favorite places. We go here every anniversary. And that's part of the deal. The first thing is story. The first part of a healthy, long-lasting relationship is story. Just like any brand, your relationship is kind of a brand. You have an origination story, and you have moments that you want to relive over and over and over and over again. And that's P.F. Chang's for us. We go every year to P.F. Chang's for our anniversary, and we tell stories about our relationship, some of the highest moments. There's plenty of time throughout your marriage to dwell on the things that that you want to try and get great. better or that aren't great or that you're constantly working on but on your anniversary dwell on the good dwell on those awesome memories relive them and tell them to one another that's what we do we're gonna go share some stories together ready yeah here we go now we're on the edge of the city for those of you who either don't live here or haven't been here. Beautiful, check this out. What was your favorite anniversary? That's really hard. That's some really good ones. What year? What's your favorite? Well, I'm gonna be cheesy and say this year's shaping up because we went on the cruise. Oh, that yeah. was pretty killer. Yeah, but uh, I, yeah. I like the one we came to P.F. Chang's I don't know what year it was. It was in a mall, and then we went and paid $40 oh. to watch <laughs> Tron. I says, $40, I'm like, $4? <laughs> no, 40, I'm like, 40. for what? For I zero. Said, for two tickets? <laughs> He's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Part of every anniversary ever, Starbucks. So stories, number one, relive the story. Number two is communication. For instance, <laughs> we're going to Starbucks and it was 400 feet away from our destination. But through some poor communication, we're now several blocks from it and we're arguing pretty good. I no, we're, we're not arguing. You're right, it's my fault. He was saving my life and I was trying to tell him it's right here. And he was like, no, we have to go, we have to go. No, it's right here. I was just saying we need to have a little situational awareness. And I was saying, I am aware that Starbucks <laughs> is right here. But there's two people having a fight on the corner. Anyway, point of communication is this, over communicate, over communicate, because most of what's being said sometimes isn't being heard or received yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. So if we're seeking to understand what the other person is saying, we're trying to over communicate what we're saying, trying to over listen to what they're saying works out a little bit better. <laughs> Number two, over communicate. <laughs> it's nice to come across other people with a video camera in their hand. Do they have one? Yeah, it's nice. I'm not very aware of my surroundings. Nope. Element? 
key to a successful relationship is compromise. A little bit of him, a little bit of me, a little give, a little take, a little give. <laughs> yeah, above and beyond, lots of give, lots of give. Compromise. <laughs> And number four is commitment. I mean, you gotta commit to it. You, you can't just go, go all in. Halfway. A lot of relationships that we know, a lot of couples that we know, they go halfway in to where, like, if she does me wrong, I'm gonna leave. Or if I do her wrong, she's gonna leave. There's always a threat, always some sort of lingering issue where if it doesn't work out, they're gonna pull chocks. One foot out, one foot out the door. In order for it to be truly long-term successful, there needs to be a safety and like a sanctuary between the two of you where no matter what, she's not going anywhere. No matter what, I'm not going anywhere. It doesn't mean there's not boundaries in there, and there's not feelings mixed in there. There's not things that we respect from one another. We do, we totally do. Like we won't go to certain areas, but that's out of love and respect rather than a sense of fear of abandonment. There's a, a mutual agreement that you are gonna stick together and you're gonna work it out. It's pretty loud over here. Let's go to number five over there. Which leads us into number five. None of this is possible, absolutely none of it, without love and primarily without Jesus. Mm -hmm. Because without him working on some of the issues that we've had in our lives, we would be, we would have self-destructed years yeah. and years and years ago. My insecurities, her issues, I'll let her talk about that. <laughs> I think you can agree. Yeah. The stuff that yeah. you were working on, the stuff that I was working on, we would have imploded because I would have run away scared a long time ago if it weren't for Jesus working in our lives. Yeah, I was just thinking about this a few minutes ago, how much we've changed. We come back to this place, uh, the Sundance Square, every year, and I'm just looking back over my memories, and we have both changed so much. We come back here the same place, but we are different people, and we're only different people because Jesus has made us better. He's made us more through the power of his love and through his love we love each other we do we do so there you are guys there's five tips for a long lasting marriage a marriage full of love a marriage full of hope a marriage full of commitment a marriage full of communication a marriage full of jesus we love you guys and hopefully this helps you out a little bit and we'll see you in the next one here's to 70 more here's to 70 more <laughs> bye we're out anniversary night. That was fun. I'd do it again. See you again next year? Mm-hmm. Same place? Yep. Alright. Maybe new adventures? <laughs>